Welcome back. The Fair Housing Justice Center is a not-for-profit civil rights organization that's aiming to eliminate housing discrimination, promoting policies that also foster open, accessible, and inclusive communities, and strengthen enforcement of fair housing laws. Now, the organization continues to change lives by empowering individuals to exercise their fair housing rights. We're pleased now to have the Fair Housing Justice Center's Vice President of the Board member, Lisa Darden, and then also board member and former president of Fair Housing Justice Center, Gene Capello. And uh, thank you both for joining us here on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And I'll do ladies first. Lisa, when we talk about fair housing, obviously in New York City, uh, a huge issue. We talk about housing discrimination. We talk about access to housing. We talk about uh, affordable housing. But from your perspective, what does fair housing really look like? Um, well, I think uh, a lot of people think because this is New York City that it's an open market and you can move into any neighborhood that you want to. But um, our testing has shown um, and lots of research has shown that that's not the case in New York. There are a lot of segregated neighborhoods. Um, I was a tester for over 10 years for FHJC and I encountered a lot of discrimination as a tester, but as a general black person, I've experienced discrimination um, when I was seeking housing on my own. And so Jean, when we talk about fair housing and uh, the work that you do, talk, us, talk to us a little bit about the organization. Well, uh, the organization came about in um, around 2005, and it was started by uh, two, uh, actually a husband and wife couple from uh, Washington, both of whom worked for the um, Department of Justice. And they were asked as they were leaving the Department of Justice to look into starting an organization that would do fair housing um, in New York. And uh, they started that organization under the auspices of an organization called Help USA. And then after it was incubated, actually went out on, on its own. Uh, I became a board member shortly after it started. And the focus uh, is to try to remedy um, systemic housing discrimination. Um, the last time I checked, um, New York City, for example, was the second most segregated city in the country for Hispanics and third most for African Americans. And that says a lot for um, the city uh, that many people think is a melting pot. But when you look behind the curtain, you find out things are a little bit different. Yeah. At least when we talk about those numbers, obviously that's a huge uh, disparity. And we know that in the midst of COVID, there's a lot that's been going on by way of evictions and things of that nature. Talk to us about the discrimination and the work that you guys are doing right now actively in addressing some of these discrimination issues? You know, we do a variety of testing. Um, and so um, in doing our testing, even now we're seeing new trends where technology is being used to discriminate um, against housing seekers, um, but as well as um, time old types of discrimination against um, people using vouchers, um, discrimination based on race, um, sometimes family. Um, if somebody uh, has uh, certain health issues, um, we see uh, discrimination against um, people with disabilities. Um, so there is a variety of discrimination that, you know, time and test, you know, tried and true, but at the same time, um, there are new emerging trends um, that we aggressively fight on a daily basis. And when we talk about fighting on a daily basis, obviously we know the fight continues and we know that there are things for affordable housing and people who are still trying to uh, have access to be able to apply to places to, to live. Um, how prevalent, Gene, are we seeing this discrimination uh, across New York City? You know, uh, across New York City, it is um, amazingly prevalent. Uh, most people don't think about it, but discrimination happens often and in many different forms. Uh, as Lisa was saying, uh, people think about discrimination, they primarily think about race, but it also occurs um, with respect to gender, with respect to sexual orientation, with respect to family status, uh, with respect to a uh, source of income. Uh, source of income essentially uh, means that there are people who 
hold federal and local vouchers, which will pay for the rent of a unit and are often uh, rejected because of that. And that's against the law. So when these kinds of things uh, occur, we encourage people to contact us and we do investigations. And when I say investigations, we generally send out testers, many of whom are uh, actors to work with us. And those actors are usually matched to see whether uh, discrimination actually exists. When someone goes and is refused an apartment, for example, you never know whether uh, what the reasoning is behind it. They may tell you that, sorry, it's not available, um, but that, man, that may or may not be true. But our testing program often finds out the, the truth of these things. And my colleague, Lisa, can tell you a lot about that because she was a tester. Yeah, Lisa, walk us through. I, I, I know that I've seen these uh, occur on television, uh, you know, where people have been behind a camera and, you know, go through the whole process. But walk us through this and uh, talk to us about your findings. Um, well, we do a lot of paired testing um, and we do a lot of different type of testing, but I was involved in a lot of paired testing where, um, you know, if we're testing, let's say, for example, uh, discrimination based on race, um, I, I would be sent um, to inquire about an apartment as a tester. We're just simply inquiring. We have no agenda. We just want to know, is there an apartment available or not? How much does, uh, you know, how much is the rent? Uh, what's the deposit? All those basic things that you um, ask when looking for an apartment. Um, but um, when I am sent out, um, I have I've experienced many different things. Mostly I experienced um, supers, um, agents uh, being very nice. Um, uh, and then I do the test, uh, a white tester is sent either before me or after me to do the exact same thing that I did. Um, and then the findings are that I was treated vastly different than my white counterpart. Um, there were times where um, I was told there was no apartment available and there was actually two to three apartments available at the time. Um, I was quoted a higher rent. Um, my white counterpart um, may be offered a discount on the rent, um, may be offered to change appliances, um, to make uh, different innovations to the apartment to make it pleasing to them. Um, where I was not offered that. Um, sometimes it can even be basic things. We're not showing the amenities in the building. Um, and so, and sometimes uh, the, the discrimination is so subtle, you just don't know that it's happening to you until um, FHJC contacted me and um, gave me the results and um, let me know that a lawsuit was going to be filed. Um, so um, sometimes it can be a little bit in your face and you can get a sense by the way someone's treating you that something is happening. Um, but a lot of times you just don't even know. It's just a, a polite, there's nothing available and you're you know, escorted out the door. What's that like for you when you have the experience of thinking, hey, this could be the place that you know, I wanna live, but then all of a sudden I find out that the process has been skewed and there has been discrimination. When you went through that process and to find out those results, how that make you feel? the best way I can describe it is soul crushing. Like, it's just, um, you know, when I'm done testing, I don't get to take off my black skin and operate, you know, in a different way. Um, once testing is done, I'm still black. And when I see the findings, it's just, it's so difficult because you feel like as an African-American, I do everything that this society requires of me, pull myself up by my own bootstraps, um, you know, get an education, follow the laws and the rules, and then you go to look for housing and you're discriminated against. And in a lot of these cases, I made more money um, than what my test uh, characteristics had. And so, um, and in, in, in neighborhoods that I would like to live in. Um, and so it's difficult when you're out there and you're testing and you see your treatment um, because now you're, you know, the curtain has been removed and you see a lot of times what's happening um, in the market. And so it is, it's very difficult and, and it, it can, it can be uh, draining as well when you think that you're doing everything you're supposed to do and it's still not good enough. Gene, so here's the situation. Lisa's gone out. You had, you've had her go out. Then you have 
a white test to go out. We find that discrimination has occurred. Uh, what happens after that, and how do you how do you navigate that process? Well, we analyze the results and see if there's a pattern. Um, and if there is a pattern, which is often the case, then we will approach um, the owners, uh, the agent, um, whoever, uh, and uh, if necessary, file a lawsuit uh, against them. And then we discuss uh, the evidence. One of the things that um, Lisa didn't mention is, is that these things are recorded. Uh, they're either audio recorded or audio and video uh, recorded, uh, wearing a wire, so to speak. And uh, the evidence is right there. Um, and if these uh, things wind up being in, in court or some administrative uh, um, organization, uh, it's up to the um, defendants then to explain or uh, go to trial or uh, settle with us. And we've had many successes over time because we have the evidence. Yeah. For example, I mentioned source of income. Uh, we recently settled the case um, in uh, Riverdale in the Bronx where uh, a woman with two children had applied for uh, an apartment and she had a federal uh, section eight voucher. Uh, she was told that uh, they didn't think that that applied and that they would not rent to her. She came to us and uh, we did an investigation uh, over a, uh, quite a period of time uh, and found out that her allegations were true. So we filed with the New York Division of uh, Human Rights and we recently reached settlement uh, with them and uh, that woman and her children now uh, will be living in an apartment in that co-op and um, the, uh, they will have a freeze on their uh, rent. In other words, it won't be any higher than whatever the Section 8 voucher provides. And uh, there were damages that were uh, 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 also uh, available uh, based upon uh, th this conduct. So, you know, we're there uh, essentially to try to do the things that the government should be doing, but often doesn't do. So if, there, uh, if there's a person out there that's watching right now and they want to have an opportunity to engage with you, uh, they're having trouble or they feel as though they've been discriminated against, what's the process for them in terms of reaching you and how does the pr process play out? Well, uh, they can reach us by uh, phone, uh, area code 212-400-8201 or through our website, uh, fairhousingjustice.org. Our intake people will uh, follow up with anyone who thinks that they have a complaint. We encourage people to do that, and uh, that starts the process. Yeah. Lisa, uh, we talked about the process for you and what it felt like and what it, and, 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 and what it is. Does it, is it quite bothersome that in the year 2022 that we're still having these conversations and still this work is needed? Yes, um, you know, I've done so many tests for FHJC, so I don't want people to think that every time I go out and do a test that it's discrimination is happening. Um, you know, there are a lot of people out there that do the right thing. Um, there are organizations such as ours that do fight housing discrimination and that can help people um, fight for their rights um, and hold uh, landlords and real estate agents accountable if they are discriminating. Um, there are wonderful people that do bring complaints to us. Um, we even have um, white people who bring complaints because they found out that they got an apartment um, and their landlord stated that um, a black couple came or uh, you know a, some couple of, of color came and um, they are not you know going you know they were not going to rent um, to them and don't worry we don't rent to those kind of people and they brought the complaint to us um, because they want to be in an inclusive community they want to be in open and accessible communities um, so though there is things happening um, there is a lot of good that is also happening and um, although we still have a long way to go um, we have come a long way and um, an organization such as ours are going to be here to make sure that we get over those finish lines and whatever else emerges we're going to tackle those things too yeah jane um are we seeing more and more come across your door given the fact that we know with covid 
Uh, we've had the moratorium that's now ended. Uh, with the moratorium ending, we anticipated that there would be more and more activity in the area of housing and fair justice. Um, what are you seeing? We're seeing um, something similar to that, uh, Darren. Um, we, um, our organization started small. We had uh, one or two investigative coordinators who handle a lot of uh, the work. We are now up to seven investigative coordinators uh, because the volume of uh, complaints has risen. Uh, and you know, in order to try to service uh, this, we've had uh, to try to hire more people uh, uh, to do it. But we're a nonprofit organization. We exist based upon, in some cases, government grants, as well as contributions uh, from dedicated people. Um, so we try to do our best. And I, I want to give a shout out to partners that we work with. There are a number of lawyers and law firms that uh, work with us uh, doing civil rights work, and uh, as well as other organizations that we partner with from uh, time to time in uh, Long Island, in Westchester, and uh, in other parts of uh, New York City. Uh, and uh, we, we can't do it alone. We're happy to have these partnerships, uh, but the work is, as you mentioned, uh, in increasing, and uh, we're just going to continue to tackle it. Well, Gene, Lisa, I want to thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, it's much needed work. Uh, the problems do exist. And as we said, in New York City, we understand how uh, minorities have been disproportionately affected when it comes to the area of housing, but glad to have allies such as you with uh, boots on the ground on the battlefield trying to make sure uh, that there's equity and justice for all. So thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Thank so you, Darren. All righty, Gene and Lisa, our guests here on the Social Justice Forum. Want you to stay with us. We got more show right after this.